Hey guys, it's Allie with Allie Answers. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. If this is your first time watching my channel, then welcome. And if you're a returning watcher or subscriber, welcome back. Often I have assisted families in moving mom or dad or a spouse into a community for seniors, whether it's assisted living or memory care, or even independent living. And a lot of times the family is like, wow, thank God that's over. Now we can relax. And the truth is, nope. It takes a little bit of transition for most people to feel completely at home and to feel completely connected in the senior living that they have chosen or that you've chosen for them. So here are some tips on how to make sure that your loved one transitions successfully so that everyone can stay relaxed and happy. Number one is one of my very favorite pieces of advice, which is don't visit too often. That's right. If you are spending the night, if you are visiting every day, if you're going multiple times a day, you are visiting too much. If you want this transition to be successful, you need to give your loved one a chance to get used to the staff that works at the community and learn to rely on those folks. If you are around, that staff is going to create space around you and your loved one and they're gonna leave you alone, then your loved one is not going to transition into trusting those people around them. It is very important during the first few weeks that a person is living in a community that they learn to trust the people around them. They learn who they can talk to, they make friends, and if you are coming a lot, and especially if they don't know when you're coming, they're gonna be watching the front door for your visit. So please do not visit too often. Number two, when you are gonna visit, let them know. Whether you have a relationship with your mom where you're texting all the time and you just text her and say, I'm coming on Thursday and today's Tuesday. Remember, we want a little space here. That's great if you have that kind of relationship and you can communicate that way. But let's say that your loved one is forgetful and one of the reasons that they're in the community is that they need support. In that case, I recommend a wipe off board where you can write on there, mom, I'm coming Tuesday, see you then. My experience is that printed signs get ignored. So your handwriting, something that you can wipe off and change when you do visit is a great idea. Number three is calendars. Most communities have calendars of events and they'll make sure that your loved one has a copy. If your loved one is able to keep up with days and different things that are happening, you might wanna encourage them to put it on a little bulletin board in their apartment or to attach it to the door, maybe going out into the hallway. Point out the activities that are going on next as you're leaving the community from your visit. You can even ask that the calendar be emailed to you. Then you can call mom or dad and say, today at two o'clock is your favorite thing. Bingo, it's 1.30, so don't forget to go down there. Number four, ask if the community has an ambassador program. And if they don't, maybe they'll start one. An ambassador program is where your loved one's peers help your loved one to assimilate into the new environment. So usually a person is assigned to your loved one and they usually know the place really well and are usually positive people that can encourage mom to go to the activities that can go down and remind her about bingo, but also make her feel comfortable, introduce her to people. And if your community doesn't have one, they might be thinking about starting it. So it's worth asking. Number five, if there are some events that would be great for your loved one to go to, but they're shy and they're not going, then if you can rearrange your schedule once in a while to come and go with them. Sitting with your mom during Bible study on a Wednesday morning might not be what your boss wants you to be doing that day, but if it helps your mom make new friends and get used to the rhythm of life in her new community, I think that is a perfect way to incorporate your visits and get your mom to meet new people. Number six is to make friends yourself with some of the staff and definitely some of the residents. The more that you know the staff and feel comfortable with them, and the more that you make friends with the other residents and you can sit and talk with the other residents while your loved one is there, it's a great way of making them feel incorporated into the community and also know that that person is a safe person to spend time with. Your connection to the staff is an important one. 
And finally, I'll say, make sure that you have the most positive attitude that you can have. No matter how frustrated you might be that the linens didn't get washed or they didn't offer your mom the milk that she likes to have before bed, never ever share that frustration with your loved one. Keep it separate, deal with it with the administration, but when you are with your loved one, stay very positive and encouraging at all times. Our loved ones need to know that we feel confident with the decision that's been made and they need to know that you're comfortable and feel that they are safe. A good attitude from you can make a big difference in the experience that your loved one has. I will add that if your loved one is having a hard time transitioning, make sure that you spend a few extra minutes talking to the activities director or to the executive director and let them know about your concerns. Communication is everything. I wish you all the very best and I hope that your loved one acclimates well in their new environment. Have a great day. Bye-bye.